and telling God's rest. Uh, you're with me, pray. Father, I thank you that you are here. Oh, yes, Lord, you are the God who speaks. You have been speaking since creation. You have been spoken in the book of Revelation. I know that even tonight, your word is released after our lives, aligning every area of our lives with your will and purpose. We surrender all to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I just looked at. Uh, Come in, Mr. Man. Well. And God said to me, He can play drums. <laughs> I just looked at him and God said to me, He can tell me. <laughs> I love my God. <laughs> uh, my God, uh, I see something else. You know, um, uh, there is a different level of anointing that is at work right now that has been released globally. And only those who are sensitive in the spirit will partake in that anointing. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 59, verse 19, that when the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Yeah. So, whenever things look like they are going bad, I want you to know that there is a lifting up of the standard in our lives. The anointing is increasing every day. When, when the world is reporting that things are like are going bad, I want you to know that the, in the spiritual realm we are saying the anointing, there is a lifting up of the standard. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a lifting up of the standard. There is too much anointing that you released until the body of Christ right now as we speak. Hallelujah. Amen. So you need to be sensitive. Go for the weight. Go for the word. Hallelujah. Well, let us go to, to the word for today. I'm believing God that I will keep you long. Maybe we might leave here around 10 o'clock. Registration process starts. All of a sudden, the bank held back. They said, no, something's not right. The ID is not right. The ID number is not right. So they are holding on the process. They are not continuing with the lodging in the... In the in the this office. They say they pray. On Monday morning, as I was awake, as I was praying, Holy Spirit led me to pray. I said, okay, what do I pray for? He said, no, bend filthy hands that are holding the keys. As I closed my eyes, he showed me black, hairy, filthy hands that has held back the keys of the house, in the spiritual realm that there are keys, that the house will be released. I said, okay, now I can see the hands. Teach me how to pray. He said, go to uh, Ezekiel 38 verse 22. Ezekiel 38 verse 22, I went there, it speaks about brimstone, fire, and hailstone. I said, I released the fire of God upon those hands. I saw the hands being bent and the keys being released. Two o'clock Monday, Monday, the bank released everything the same, the same day that, that the hands were destroyed. So I want to put it to you that uh, the God that we serve is still at work. I want to declare and decree that whatsoever that the enemy is holding back in your life, let those hands, let those evil hands be destroyed Amen. by the consuming fire of God. Amen. If it be it a document, be it a key, be it a contract, be it a breakthrough, whatever that the enemy is holding back unto your lives, be it a position, let the fire, let the consuming fire of God destroy those filthy hands, those evil hands. Nothing will hold back your breakthrough again. I want to put it to you that from this moment, your breakthrough is released. Hallelujah. Expect that call tomorrow. Before the end of business day tomorrow, you will receive a call giving you the news that you expect. 
Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Amen. No, no, okay. your, 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 your amen is paralyzed. Give the whole. Do you believe it? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, and one of my biggest testimonies, this one I cannot, I, I must share it with you. Uh, a family here, they've got their helper in the house. The son of the helper was beaten to the pulp. Like a pulp, like he was left for dead. And they called me, they told me that no, the son is in the hospital, but he can't use this bladder, is no longer working. And the right hand is no longer functioning properly. I said, okay, so I'm going to pray. God has got a lot of those in the storeroom. We prayed, I prayed, and God, through his grace and mercy, restored the blood. I gave the boy a new bladder. He can go to the bathroom by himself, and the hand is functioning very well. Amen. Nothing is missing in this world. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I must test that because we overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Last testimony. I've never met this person. The helper at home, the one who's helping my parents, said to my mother, my mother's friend has just suddenly gone insane. She's mad, and after being mad, she stopped talking. She became mute, like post, mute, like normal voice out. And my mother said, okay, let me give you my son's number. He will pray, he's in job, and he will pray. I trust him. They called me, I said, no, send me the names. They sent me the names. Saturday, I was about to sleep thinking that, you know, we are waking up early for our intercession because we, our intercession, we wake up really early, like early. Well, Holy Spirit said to me, you're not sleeping. You are starting to pray now 11 o'clock Saturday. I will tell you when to stop. I continued praying. 11 o'clock, I'm praying. 12 o'clock, I'm praying. 1 o'clock, Holy Spirit dropped the name of the old woman. Who can't talk and do anything? Pray for her. Pray for her this way and this way and this way and this way. I prayed for her. That was on Sunday morning. After church, I received a call. My mother said, No, we didn't want to call you because we knew that you were at church. The old woman is fine. She's talking. She's restored back to her mind. Amen. Hallelujah. So that can only be God. What I remember, even though I can't remember the prayer specifically, what I can remember is that I was using the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ the most. Hallelujah. Amen. This one, I was just releasing the blood of Jesus Christ because I knew right away in my spirit, man, that I was dealing with the spirit of witchcraft. A mind was restored back and a voice was restored back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've never seen her face. I don't know how she looks like. I don't even know the daughter. The only person that I know is the helper who works at home in Venda. Why am I telling you this? We don't have to toil to receive from the Lord. Even the son that I was talking about, the son of the helper, I've never met him. I don't even know how he looks. But God knows how he looks. He restored the blood. I don't even know how the injuries were, I think it, I'm grateful that I didn't see the injuries. Maybe it might have affected my faith. But I didn't pray for him more than 20 minutes. There was no toiling. I knew that God will restore him. And I had that faith. So why am I testifying this? I want you to, to enter into God's rest. Stop toiling. What is to toil? When you do things in your strength outside the ability of God, you toil. Let us go to the book of Genesis chapter 1. The book of Genesis chapter 1. I'm not going to read everything. I will just refer to... Let's go sit down. I will just refer to... To the scriptures. 
The Bible said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. <laughs> I want to put it to you that there is a purpose why God didn't start by creating a human being. He is God. He could have said, it could have said, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. And then Adam and Eve pulled their clothed back and start working with God. It did not happen like that. The Bible said the earth was without form and void. Still God did not call man for help. There is a reason why God started by waking. And where were you? You were, you were witnessing everything that God was doing. But the Bible says that you were in Him before the foundation of the world. And yet God did not call for your help. And it confused me. And God said, let there be light. The light came. Man was nowhere to be seen. God did not need your help to push away the darkness. And who's that light? It's Jesus Christ, obviously. And God continued to separate the waters. The air. He called for the earth from the waters. Remember, the soil that you are standing on was immense under the waters. Still, man was nowhere to, to, to be seen. Up to Genesis, and he created the animals. Imagine, he started with the animals, birds of the air, crawling animals, fish of the sea. Still, man was nowhere to be seen. So why did the Bible start this way? Sunday we said in the beginning, God. But even today, was they say in the beginning, God. But our approach is different. Why didn't God start by creating men? Ask yourself that question. Because man was going to help God to create. And God did not need any help. What I love, when man was a spiritual being, Genesis 2, verse 3 said, On the seventh day God rested. Man was not yet created, was not yet formed, yet created. So, you are a spirit being, blessed. Can we just go to Genesis 127? I want you to read Genesis 127. I want you to read it aloud. No, no, 28. Okay, let's start 27, 28, 27, 28. Said, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. 28. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every level, everything that moves. So man is, is still spirit. He is he has not occupied earth yet. That one you have to know. You have not occupied earth yet. Man is still what? Spirit. God said, you are blessed. You are blessed. And show me where man was toiling for the blessings. <laughs> man did not have a body yet to work. He is still a spirit. And a man in his spirit form, the exact image of God, he is given dominion that he didn't work for. Entering into God rest. So why is man toiling 
so much bodily for blessings is because man has lost his identity. Can I go back to the Bible again? And God said, let us make men according to our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Man is spirit. He doesn't have a body yet. A word is released. A word which is spirit. A spirit is released to a spirit. The word becomes one with man. <laughs> oh. And man is blessed. Can you go to chapter 2? I want you to see something. You know, I don't know. I don't know, my God. You know, he is something else. Does the heavens and the earth, all, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, he said, Does the heavens and earth and all the hosts of heaven were finished? On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. <laughs> Man is still spirit, God is resting. Man does not have a body yet to occupy earth. God starts by resting. <laughs> Let us go to 7. And the Lord for God formed man of the earth, of the dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. God in his rested position is releasing a man who looks like him to the earth that is already finished. The finished product. He said, man occupy. The dominion to occupy was given to a man spiritually and later, a man is given a body to use for the dominion. Not the other way around. Man today is toiling because they want to dominate through the body, not through the spirit. Man has lost contact with God. God is saying, I must tell you this evening, let my word be your food and this man, spirit man will be restored back to his dominion position and then your flesh will follow, not the other way around. Yeah. I love what Jesus Christ has said. We're talking about entering to God rest. So if, you, if, if okay, then before I can talk about what Jesus Christ has said in John 17, but if you can check, if you read the book of Genesis and ask God what happened, you will see that when God was resting, you did not have a body. You were rested with him. Carrying a weight of blessing and dominion. You were in him. And God said, there must be a place where I can release this man. He's formed. He's still in me. But there must be a place so that he can have a proper relationship with the earth. And then he formed man from the dust. When he breathed unto the man, man became, that dust became a living being. Your flesh was formed because of the spirit of the living God. So you think through your dust you can achieve what the spirit should. <laughs> you think through your dust you can put back on the God on the back seat and achieve what the spirit man should. It is not possible. 
If you look at the process of men, I work with process flows at work. Standard operating procedures and process flows, I work with those things. I know that once a process is flowed somewhere, <laughs> there's bound to be an error on the, on, 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 the, on the output. The end product is bound to be a damage. It's bound to fail a quality test. So we are missing the proper process flow. What is the proper pro process flow? Man is spirit. Formed by what? By the word of God. So where should man be? In the word. Not in the dust. Amen. Am I talking to someone? Amen. Work belongs to God. Burdens belong to Jesus Christ. You, your responsibility is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You will partake of the finished works of God and God will take your burdens away. As it is right now, we are praying from the position of work and burdens. And such prayers are not prayers of faith. Because positionally, we are misplaced. But now I want to put it to you that as a child of God, you can make a decision tonight. As a father, I'm no longer going to pray from the position of work because you have rested before you created me, before you formed me. Therefore, my spirit man has been resting in you. I'm going to rest in your word. How do you rest in the in God's word? The twelve spies, when they came back to spy from the land of Canaan, eleven could not find rest. Ten could not find rest in the word of God. They said to, uh, the, to the Israelites, we were like grasshoppers on their side. They rested on their flesh. They said we were like grasshoppers. What were they looking at? Their flesh. They compare flesh to flesh. Praying a prayer comparing flesh to flesh is bound to give you no results, zero. What do you do? You cry the more. Why did God bring us here? Those men are too big. They will kill us. They will destroy us. They are too powerful. They are giants. Why? Flesh to flesh. But only two men step out of the flesh. Joshua and Caleb. And say we are resting on his word. God said go occupy. I've given you the land. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. What are you resting on? Prayers that prevail. We pray or prayers by comparing flesh to flesh. You know, I don't think I'll make it. You know, you know, I don't think I'll make it. Why? You know that person is more qualified than me. No. That person is more experienced than me. No. Whose son are you? Whose daughter are you? In the beginning, God did not create Adam and Eve. <laughs> you were created after the finished works. Even to this day, God is done with what belongs to you. Through his way. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I talking to someone? Amen. We forgot that God is sovereign. His, his power cannot be questioned. No authority, no demon 
nor any other spirit being can stand before God and question his authority. He's sovereign. He's all God by himself. So when you stand by his word, you have received the power of attaining, the power to use the name of Jesus Christ. When you say in the name of Jesus, you are calling upon the sovereign power, the authority of God to say, Father, I know the situation might not look good, but you are sovereign. You rule above all. You are above all powers and principalities. But when you pray the prayer of the ten spies, oh God, can't you see that they are about to destroy me? Oh God, can't you see that they are about to kill? No, Father, in you I live. He who dwells in a secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of his wings. You will say, in the shadow of your wings, my God, I'm hiding. You have protected me against the storms of life, entering into God's rest. You know, I love Ephesians 6.12, the armor of God. One of the things, the first Armor that was mentioned there is the belt of truth. Praying a prayer that is based on lies and deception makes you release the words that are based on lies and deception. But when you know the truth, but when you know the truth, you look around. You look around your life. You say, "Father, physically, I can't see anything that can move here. I mean, physically, according to people, my life is stuck. I have no direction. I don't know whether to move forward or not. But Father, the good thing is that I am in you." And you in me. I have taken your word. And your word is my life. You said in your word. You will never leave me nor forsake me. Father. Tell me what to do. I'm going to pray the whole night. Am I going to rest to sleep? God can say you are praying the whole night. I want, to have, I want to have communion with you. Still, if you are praying the whole night having communion with God, you have entered into God's rest. Because you are in fellowship with the Father. Or God can say to you, sleep, my daughter, it is done. I remember a story of a man who went to the mountain. He said, I'm not going to go to church, I'm going to the prayer mountain. I want to spend time there because church is there. I want to hear God by myself. Okay. He prepared his lunchbox. He went to the mountain. He went up there the mountain. He worshiped God by himself. He entertained himself after that. After his church was out, he ate his lunch. He fell asleep. When he woke up, it was dark. No light. He, doesn't, he couldn't see the way home. He walked. He stumbled and fell off the cliff. He was busy going down. Likely, he held down onto the branch of a tree. And he started praying, God, save me. God, save me. And God said, let go the branch. No, he didn't want to let go the branch because he's holding on to it so tight. His strength is saving him. And God is saying, let go. 
He said, God, you don't love me. I said, help me, not kill me. If I let go, I'm going to fall and die. He held it onto the branch. He said, okay, can somebody besides God help me? And that's what Christians do. Say, so can somebody besides God help me? He called upon. Nobody responded. He held on to the branch and his hands grew weary. He became tired and tired and tired. Ultimately, he lost the grip. When he fell, he realized that he was just one meter away from the ground. So he just landed. <laughs> That's what Christians do. We hold on to our strength. We don't want to let go. We have something that we know and believe in. Not the God that we know and believe in. When God said, trust me, let go, enter into my rest. We said, no, physically, if I can let go, my friends will laugh at me. My family will say what this and this. Let's go to Hebrews 4. In closing, Hebrews 4. I want you to remember one thing. One thing that you must remember for the rest of your life. There is a reason why Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, it did not start by saying, in the beginning God created Adam and Eve. There is a reason. God did not need your help. <laughs> he needs your obedience. Am I talking to someone? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't hear you. Your, your amen is paralyzed. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as held to them, but the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who received it. Every time when the word of God comes, it comes as logos. But when you mix it with faith, it becomes your rhema. God wants you to obey him by mixing the word that you are receiving with faith. That's how you enter his rest. Am I talking to someone? Amen. I have tried this before. It did not work. Pastor, you just don't understand. No. I'm not here to understand. I'm here to encourage you. Have faith. Even if you don't understand yourself, have faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to verse 3. For we, have, we who have believed to enter that rest, as he said, so I saw my word, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, when you fail to believe, you fail to enter into his rest, although the works were finished. Before what? The foundation of the world. Am I telling you to someone? Let us read. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day, it is said, and God rested on the seventh day from all his work, and again in this place they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Again, it takes a certain day, saying, 
David today, after such a long time, as it has said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. 8. For if Joshua had given them rest, they would not have afterwards spoken for another day. Therefore remains their rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his work as God did from his. When are you going to cease to stop the works of the flesh? Eleven, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall into the example of disobedience. Twelve, most of you love this scripture. For the word of God is what? Is living and what? Powerful, sharper than what? Any two-edged sword. Many quote this scripture without understanding the context. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus, when God commanded the Sabbath, Leviticus 25, you can read it all, the high priest will work, they will toil, preparing the altar, slaughtering, the, slaughtering everything, so that when the people of God come to atonement, the high priest have done this work, and they will do this year after year. But Jesus Christ, our high priest, has entered the holy place once and for all so that we can enter into that rest. How do we enter into that rest? Believe the finished works of Calvary. Believe the word of God. Believe what he says. Resting is not laziness is entering a place of belief. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He's talking about rest. Amen? Amen. When your mind wants to wander around and take you to a place of depression, and take you to a place of stress. Go for the word. Because Jesus Christ, when he was praying, let us go to John 17 in closing. John 17, when Jesus Christ was praying, John 17, I want to show you something. John 17, 3. So he said, this is eternal life that they may know you. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I'm looking for verse 4. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work you have given me to do. Jesus Christ is saying he has finished the works that God has given him to do. For whose sake? Say for my sake. Say for my sake. Jesus has finished the works for my sake. So where do you live? In him. The one who finished the works. And how do you live in him? The just shall live by faith. Who are the just? The justified by the finished works of Calvary. The just, even them tell the just, it's always about the righteous. Those who can stand before God without a sense of guilt, shame, and condemnation shall live by faith because they don't doubt who they are in God. Hallelujah. Can you stand up? I, I, I want you to say, Father, give me the grace to enter into the rest. I want to be in that place where in my unbelief, I believe. <laughs> in my faithlessness, I have faith. In my weakness, I'm strengthened. Where I don't feel like praying, I pray. Because I know that in Him, there is rest. If you want to pray, prayer that prevails, I'll go back to Joshua. 
Joshua said, we can because God said. The other ten spies said, we can't because they are too big. Joshua rested on what God has said. I want you to find your peace in what God has said. Rest in this word. And as you pray, your faith will be catapulted to a level where it can pull back your answers. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. I want you to talk to your father. Talk to him. Talk to him. There is a grace of rest. Jesus Christ said, Come to me, all those who labor, and I'll give you rest. For my yoke is light. Come to me, all those who labor, I'll give you rest. That's Jesus Christ. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. All those, I'll give you rest. Rest from your thoughts. Talk to him. Talk to him. Commit your ways to the Lord. Commit your works to the Lord. It is not about what you can do. It's not about what your flesh can do. It's all about what God can do through you. Lord, I thank you. Mm. Oh, sitari mo shiari mekesia, besandi mo usari mekesia ta. I thank you, mighty God, that Father, we have entered the place of rest. We have entered, mighty God, the place of rest through our faith in you. We have entered, mighty God, the place of rest. Through our faith in you. We thank you, mighty God. We give you the glory. We give you the praise and adoration. We thank you, Father. We bless you. We honor you, mighty God. Be thou glorified. We thank you, Father. Even those who are watching, mighty God, let this grace, mighty God, be released unto their lives. Father, let them know that Father, it is not about what we can do or what we can't do. It's all about what the word can do. I thank you, mighty God. I give you the praise, the honor, the glory, and adoration. I bless you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord, you are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, mighty God, that as a church, 